We've now learned several methods for solving differential equations, but as we said at the very beginning of the semester, some types of differential equations just can't be solved analytically. So today we're going to look at a method for solving a differential equation numerically. Um, and what we're going to do is take an initial value problem, like the problem I have on the board, and we're going to turn it into a system of equations and then use Euler's method to approximate the answer to that system, which will then be an answer to the differential equation. So um, notice, first of all, that this, this equation is one that we can solve analytically. I chose it um, so that we can solve it analytically, then solve it using Euler's method, and then see um, how close we got. So let's first solve this analytically. Um, we've got uh, y, the second derivative of y plus 4 times the derivative of y plus 3y is equal to 0. Uh, y of 0 is equal to 1.5 and y prime of 0 is equal to negative 2.5. So um, we can solve this using a characteristic equation r squared plus 4r plus 3 is equal to 0. We factor that uh, plus 3 and plus 1. All right, so r is equal to negative 3 or negative 1. So our solution is going to be y of t. Our general solution is y of t equals some constant c1 times e to the negative 3t plus c2 times e to the negative t. All right, now this is an initial value problem, so we can solve for c1 and c2 by plugging in our initial conditions. Uh, let's first figure out what y prime is. Uh, y prime of t is going to be negative 3c1 e to the negative 3t. Uh, minus c2e to the negative 2. All right, now let's, let's use our initial conditions. Uh, so we're going to get 1.5 is equal to, well, if we plug in 0 for t here, this e to the negative 3t and the e to the negative t is just going to become 1. So this is c1 plus c2. And then same thing down here, this is going to be negative 2.5 is equal to uh, negative 3c1 minus c2. And now we can solve for c1 and c2. Uh, let's just add these two equations together to get rid of the c2. We're going to end up with negative 1 is equal to negative 2c2. So c2 is equal to 1 half. And if c2 is equal to 1 half, c uh, sorry, C1. C1. C1 is equal to one half. If C1 is equal to one half, then C2 uh, is equal to one. So our solution here is y is equal to one half times uh, e to the negative three t plus. Uh, e to the negative t. So there's there's our solution to our uh, to our equation uh, solved analytically. Now let's look at uh, at Euler's method. All right. So the first thing we want to do is uh, put this. It turned this into a system of equations in normal form. So what we mean by that is we're going to take this higher order, highest order derivative here. We've got a, a second derivative, and we're going to solve for that. So we get y double prime of t is equal to, well, we just move everything over to the other side of the equal sign here, negative 4 y prime. Uh, plus or minus 3y. All right, now what we want to do is we want to create a new 
uh, a couple new variables here. We're going to do x sub 1, or a couple new functions. x1, uh, is, we're going to say is equal to y. And x2 is equal to y prime. All right, so if x1 is equal, to, and we want to put, uh, create a couple, a system of uh, differential equations here, where x1 prime, um, well, x1 prime uh, would be y prime, which is equal to x2. And then x2 prime, uh, x2 is y prime, so x2 prime is y uh, double prime, which is this. So we have negative 4 times y prime, which is x2, uh, minus 3 times y, which is x1. So now we have this system of equations, and we're going to use Euler's method to figure out what x1 and x2 are. Um, and x1, remember, is equal to y, so if we can figure out what x is, uh, then we know what y is. Or if we can figure out what x1 is, we know what y is. So x1, by Euler's method, uh, let's, well, let's, let's do this. We, we have an initial value for x1. We know x1 of 0 is equal to 1.5. So what we want is x1 of some increment up from 0. And we, we were told that we wanted to use an increment of 0 0.1. So let's figure out what x of x1 of 0 0.1 is. Well, that's going to be x1 of 0 plus our increment, which is 0 0.1, times um, the change in x1, um, which is equal to x2. So uh, So we're just going to take x1 or at 0 and add our increment times the, the change in x1, which is x2 at 0. Um, and then over here, uh, let's, let's first put in some numbers here. Uh, we know that x1 of 0 is equal to 1.5. x2 of 0 is equal to negative 2.5. So uh, 1.0.1 1. 1. times negative 2.5 is negative 0.25 plus uh, 1.5 is going to be 1.25. So now we've we've found the solution um, a little bit away from from our our starting point at zero. We've gotten 0.1 away. Um, Let's also figure out what x2 is, because we're going to need that going forward. If we're going to figure out what x1 of 0 0.2 is, we're going to need to know what x2 of 0 0.1 is. So x2 of 0 0.1 is going to be equal to, uh, well, x2 of 0 plus our increment, 0 0.1, times the change in x2, which is equal to all of this. So negative 4 times x2 of 0 um, plus, uh, minus 3 times x1 of 0. And then we get one more parenthesis there. All right, and so now this x2 of 0 is negative 2.5 uh, plus 0 0.1 times negative uh, 4 times x2 of 0, which is negative uh, 2.5, minus 3 times x1 of 0, which is 1.5. And that is going to be equal to uh, negative 4 times negative 2.5 is positive 10 minus 4.5 is 
five, positive 5.5 times 0 0.1 is uh, 0 0.55, uh, minus 2.5 is negative 1.95. All right, so now, uh, now we've, we've figured this out for 0 0.1. Of course, we're not going to be satisfied with that. We want to um, figure out what... Uh, what y would be equal to farther down the road, farther away than just uh, than 0 0.1 away from um, from zero. But to do that, we're going to need to um, we're going to need a computer because I don't want to sit here at the board and then figure this out for each different problem. This is something that a computer can handle a lot easier. So let's let's go to a spreadsheet and finish out this problem. All right, now let's see how well our approximation works. So first let's set up our uh, variable t here. And then here we'll put the actual value for y. And then here let's do x1 and x2. And we're gonna start with a t value of zero. And then let me put over here let me put our h equals, we'll start with a, a an interval of 0 0.1. And so for over here, for this value, we'll just put that this is equal to this uh, plus our interval. And let's fix that cell in place. And Let's take this down to one. So for t values between zero and one, we're gonna figure out what our actual y is and then what our approximation for y is, which remember was x1. So our actual formula for y is gonna be uh, one half times e to the negative three times t plus uh, e to the negative t. All right, so we got 1.5, that's good. And then we can copy all those down. So there's our y values for, uh, for t between zero and one. Now let's do uh, use Euler's method for our approximation. So x1, uh, x1 for of zero is 1.5. We're, we're gonna start with our given inputs for x1 and x2. x2 is gonna be uh, negative 2.5. Remember x2 is y prime. And then uh, x of 0 0.1, is going to be equal to um, x1 of zero plus our interval, which is out here, and let me fix that in place, times um, our x2 of zero, which is right there. And we get, uh, we get that, let's copy that down. These are not gonna be the correct answers, yet, but we got to put in our formula for x2. So x2 of 0 0.1 is going to be equal to x2 of 0, uh, which is right here, plus our interval, and we'll fix that cell, uh, times negative uh, 4 times x2 of 0, which is here, minus three times x1 of zero, which is right there. Close off those parentheses, hit enter, and bring that all the way down. Okay, so now here uh, in this column is our approximation for y. Here's the, the actual value for y, and you can see that we're reasonably close. Um, we're between uh, three and five one hundredths of a point off. 
uh, for each of these values. Um, so not bad. But the reason that I set this up like this is so that I can easily change our interval. Let's change it to 0 0.1. And then let's go ahead and extend this all the way down to 1 again. A bit more right there. That'll bring us all the way down to one. Um, and then we will extend these all the way down, extend these all the way down, extend that all the way down. So now you can see that our approximations are really close, uh, generally within uh, one one hundredth of a point, and often e even closer than that. All the way down. Um, so that's how we use Euler's method. Now it, again for this problem we were able to actually solve y, solve for y analytically. Most of the time when you're using this method it's because you you have a problem you can't solve analytically. But um, I, we chose a problem that you could solve so that you could see this, see just how close this approximation comes to the actual answer.